Warning, this is a Katawa Shoujo playthrough. Some content may be inappropriate for kitties. Previously, on Katawa Shoujo. Feel my fast. But I'm half Japanese, half Scottish. Yes, I was right! So, Shizune and L Lily are cousins? That was a date, wasn't it? Um, well, if you wanted it to be, so kawaii! Her lips brushing against my other cheek. Yes. Oh, we finally got to one of these. Our best superpower ever. This is a goodbye, guys. This is a goodbye. This guy's gonna be so sad. <laughs> oh no! He's talking about Akira, isn't he? And our story continues. Hey, <laughs> everybody out there in YouTube land. Jake of the One Man Band is back again playing more of the awesomeness that is Katawa Shoujo. So much fun. So awesome. Man, with Lily gone, life's crazy. Let's continue. Okay. I stop as if, as I'm about to leave the classroom, turning on the ball of my heel to meet Matau. He's holding out, he's holding out to me a couple of worksheets we'd worked on during the day with a long, lanky arm. <clears throat> Would you mind giving this to Irokazawa? I'd normally ask one of the girls to do it, but I assume you'd be checking on her. Well, you are, you are more observant than I thought you were, even though it probably would be better if you would have given it to a girl, you know. I'm, I'm just, I'm just thinking... Logically. Shut up. For a moment, I briefly consider the possibility of that being more of an innocent prediction. I quickly discard the idea, though, as this <clears throat> hard to think of him acting in such a Machiavellian way is not in his nature. Yeah, you thought I wouldn't get that word, huh? I know Machiavelli. Not really. I mean, we have lunch every once in a while, but sure, no problem. <clears throat> Walk into the girls' dormitory. Oh, okay. It's this music. I was like, oh no, is it gonna be sad music? I just want sad music. Walking up the hallway to the girls' dormitory, several ideas of why Hanako's been absent float around my head. The most obvious of them is just a simple cold. That said, she may not have been sick at all. It's been almost a week since Lily left, and despite her at least appearing to be normal, I subjected she's somewhat more insecure about it, then she's letting on. <clears throat> Eventually, we come to Hanako's dorm dormitory room. It's a simple brown door separating us. Her room's position next to Lily's is extremely convenient, and probably a large contributor to their meeting in the first place. Give a quick knock. Grimacing slightly at the prospect of her being sick, I wrap my knuckles against the door. Yo, Hanako, open up the door, Tishio. I'm here to give you something, and we gotta go down to the something. I don't know. I can't rap because I'm white. <laughs> Silence. I listen intensely for a sound of shuffling coming from inside, but I can't hear a thing. I knock on the door again, slightly harder. Still no answer. How strange. What? The door opens behind me. I'm free. <laughs> A freckled and somewhat scrawny underclassman I don't recognize comes out and is briefly taken off guard by my presence. Uh, hi. Uh, ask about Hanako. You came all this way, boy! Actually, that might be a rather... This might be a fortuitous meeting. Hey, excuse me, do you know if Hanako's come out of your room today or not? She's doesn't seem to be answering. Irukase is... Irukazawa is Irukazawa. She's not answering the door, it's totally normal. That tall foreign girl's the only person she'll ever talk to, after all. She gives a shrug before walking off down the hallway, having much more important manners to attend to than Hanako or I. I dismiss the atti Her dismissive atti attitude annoys me. Hanako must... have a... 
reputation as a hermit, a reputation that doesn't seem outright un undressed, undeserved, at least in the time we before we'd met. Scratching my head, I make one last attempt to getting Hanako to answer as I knock on the front door one final time. Hanako, it's me! The Tao said to give you some stuff! I want to talk! For a while, the attempt seems just as unsuccessful as the last. Just before I slip the sheets under her door, though, I can hear the handle rattling. Hi! You're in your nightgown! So cute. As the door opens halfway, I do my best to look at Hanako over as quickly as possible. As I... It's a task made somewhat difficult by her oversized gown holding so much of her... Hiding so much of her body. She doesn't look sick, or at least not immediately so. To be honest, I have preferred that if her... I have preferred that to her expression right now. Hi, Hanako. The town wanted me to give you these since you weren't in class today. I hold out the loose sheets, which she tentatively takes in her hands. The way she moves is weird, devoid of thought, as if she's some kind of mechanical automaton rather than a living being. Maybe she is. Are you a robot? That'd be actually kind of cool, but... Are you? Okay? If you're feeling sick or anything, I, I could get the nurse. It feels almost... Almost pitiful to say it with such a routine. Get well soon, act. I can't think of anything else that I could possibly do for her, though. <clears throat> you can stay with her, have her talk to you. Let her thoughts get out. She seems to collect herself a little at the notion, but only a little. I'm fine. No, you're not fine. Okay, no, no okay, Hishio. You know she's not fine. You, you might as well try to have her talk. Talking is good. Okay. 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 <laughs> Sorry. An awkward silence follows, eventually ending with her nodding solemnly in, in farewell and closing the door. The entire experience feels surreal. More than a little put off, I wander back to my room and hope that she'll be better by tomorrow, despite not knowing exactly what wrong with her. Maybe it was that time of the month? Maybe? What do you guys think? I don't know. But I, I've never, i never seen that keep someone from school before. Once again, I find myself in front of Hanako's door after another of her unexplained absences from class. Elsa, I know you're in there. <clears throat> Do you want to build a snowman? <laughs> Nothing considering this is the second day in a row she's been like this. I'm starting to worry about her. <clears throat> Summoning my willpower, I decide to try at least one way at least to get her to respond. Hanako, if you don't say anything, I'll go get the nurse for you. Go away. Oh, no. Sad music! <laughs> I don't like sad music. What? It's hard to tell whether her tone is one of depression, anger, or both. What in the world can I actually do to help her if she doesn't even want help? I manage... The message is clear enough. I just... I can't just leave her like this, though. Just sitting in her room for days on end. Yeah, rubbing my temples and thoughts, I withdraw to my own room to think about how to proceed. Rationally, I would have just sat outside her door, you know, just on a style from Frozen. Rationally, that's what's needed here, as an overreaction may just make matters worse. I dig around, drawer after drawer of my desk, looking for where I put that damned piece of paper. Before I left, Lily told me the number 
to call her on while in Scotland, and I wrote it down. Not that I need it, though. The damn thing is... Ah, oh, here. Here it is! Found it! I probably should just have entered it directly into my cell phone. Come to think of it, without further ado, I enter the numbers and anxiously press the call button. <clears throat> it's my phone. Actually, this is my phone. The fact the phone rings at all shows that I got the prefix of a call to Scotland right, at least. It never made, I've never made an international call before, so that's some comfort. Eventually, the phone picks up. A feminine voice I don't recognize on the other end. It's probably Lily's mother. It's a towel. English. Damn, my only weakness. Suddenly, finding myself unprepared, I realize I can't understand a word she's saying because it's in Scottish accents. Either due to the limited vocabulary or her heavy accent. I should have anticipated this since, according to Lily, her mother is a native Scot. I soldier on and hope that she might know some Japanese, considering it's her daughter's native language. Uh, this is, um, Hishao Nikkei speaking? An enthusiastic sound of revelation can be heard as she recognizes the language. My feelings of relief are is immense. Ah, you must be one of Lily's friends from... S Wait, let me try to get my, my Scottish on. Ah, you must be one of Lily's friends from school, correct? I know it's, I know it's a man's voice. Shut up. Can't do feminine Scottish. Even so, her accent means I have to concentrate to work out what she's saying. Yeah, that's right. Please, please uh, speak with you, Mrs. Satow. That's not... It's not nice of her to find someone... It's so nice of her to find someone so polite. Lily, dear, it's for you. Come away from here, haggis. You need to come over here. Talk to your friend. Because I can't understand him at all. Her mother seems nice, if a little over-enthusiastic giving the mundane situation. There's a small silence as Lily takes her time getting to the phone. In the distance, I can just make out her mother scolding her playfully for just getting up. Hello, Lily speaking. You sound awful. She makes a sound somewhat between of a dying animal and a yawn. Never a good sign. The one thing I did remember to check before calling was the time zone. Oh, wait. It'd be pretty late in the morning over there, so she really has no excuse. Not feeling well? Just tired. What time is it there? Late afternoon. School finished for the day not long ago. You're really not a morning person, are you? I don't need... You making fun of me as well. Well, good to know you still got your sense of humor, Lily. It takes me a measure of restraint not to laugh at her pained groan. Poor girl. How are you doing over there, bar the mornings? It's been enjoyable after not meeting them for so long. Just having a meal together with my parents is nice. Though the pool and the sheer size of the house mean might have something to do with that as well. Pool? Girl! I don't want to come to your house! You got a pool? I want to swim in the pool! Even if they're not Japanese, from the way it sounds, her family must be pretty wealthy and live to live so luxuriously. Are things all right with you and Hanako? Yeah, yeah, no. No, damn. I was hoping that wouldn't be brought up quite so quickly. I take a moment to try to sort out exactly how to describe the situation without causing her undue worry, but she picks up on that without a word being said. Hanako's not well, is she? Yeah, and it's playing the sad music again. How did you know? Because today is her birthday. I hope she... Oh. Oh. That's right. I'd hope she might have gotten at least a little better after coming to know you, but... How is she right now? 
She missed school yesterday and seemed out of sorts when I checked up on her. Today she missed school again and she told me to go away. I've really got no idea what to make of it! I don't understand, girls! Has this happened in the past? Is it r related to her scarring in some way? Unfortunately so. Roughly the same thing happened last year when her birthday came up. It was the birthday light cake candles that lit the house on fire! I see fire! Smog! Damn it. As far as I can tell, it's because her parents died in an accident that caused her scarring, and Hanko blames herself for their deaths. She should have blown the candles out! Terrible jokes! I'm sorry! <laughs> what she says does seem to make sense. If she's blaming herself on her birthday, she may well be ruining that she w was ever born. You should never, ever think that. You are all beautiful people. The fact that Lily seems so in the dark about it, though, <clears throat> almost to the extent that I am, is a surprise. So that's why she lives in the stu student dormitories as well. Has she ever told you any more about the accident? As close as we've come, she's barely told me anything about what happened. What I know about it is largely conjuncture. She sounds depressed, almost defeated. Considering the trauma Hanako might have gone through, I really can't fault Lily for not knowing. Nevertheless, she still seems to consider it a personal failing. Don't blame yourself, Lily! With everything she's gone through! I know. Thank you, Hishio. I'm sorry I can't be more help to you. It's fine. I'll just give it more thought. Thanks, and have a, have a good time in Scotland. Um, I... What is it? It's nothing. Thank you for taking care- No! I want to know what you are gonna say! Okay, bye. Goodbye. Boop! And then our cell phone ends. And with that, the line goes silent. Admit to the seemingly only- Admit the seemingly only increased number of questions I can't answer. The most immediate is what Lily was going to say! <laughs> oh, oh no. I am an idiot! She must have thought I was calling to talk to her, but I only asked for help with Hanako! No! You idiot! You ruined it! <laughs> We are an idiot uh, poking you. Well, first things first. For now, I need to at least sort out Hanako. Make sure she's actually eating okay. Hanako, do you want to build a snowman? The occasional passing student gives badly hidden glances at the plate of food I carry into the female dormitories. Hey! Hey! You're not me! Don't look at me like that! You don't know me! It's hardly a meal to be proud of. Only being a instant microwave meal from the convenience store. But it's still... it'll still at least fill her up. Eventually I arrive I arrive outside of her room. After having to ward off a couple of girls who jokingly tried to pilfer the food I had taken so long to <laughs> procure. What is wrong with people trying to steal the food? I mean, I mean, okay, 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 honestly. If, like, somebody walked in and they had a plate of food, do you just go and steal their food? No! What is wrong with you? I decided to forego knocking since it has proven to be utterly useless measure, and it's somewhat difficult to do with my hands full. Hanako, 
Licetio. I know you're in there. <laughs> I've got some food for you right here. I know you're upset, but you know we're best friends, and I can't think of a rhyme. <laughs> Silence, as I expected. At least I'll leave it beside your door. Please, please eat it at least, okay? There. I've said my piece. Now it's up to her. Putting the plate down, I walk back to my own room to eat my dinner. By the time I return to Hanako's dormitory, a good hour has passed. Thankfully, there isn't anything to be seen beside her door. I walk back at least somewhat happier that she's eating. Yeah! We did it, guys! If she intends to get through this by herself, then being able to help, even if it's just in such a small way, is at least something. Time skip, time transition, right now, play the tune, there's the logo, yes it is, yeah ha ha, ha ha ha. And we are in the library. Hanako's natural habitat when she is not inside her dormitory. I sit reading in the library after school, turning page after page, barely registering the words written on each out of sheer boredom. With my cheek resting in my hand, just like this, I can't help noticing the slightly rough feeling against my palm. It wouldn't be long before I need to get a razor. You aren't shaving yet, boy! I was... I was like... Like when I was 16. That's when I started shaving, man. Now I gotta shave every single day! Cause it's just like, if I don't, I'm like... I'm like Sasquatch up in here. Giving up on reading, I... Simply let my head drop into the book in front of me. <laughs> Things have quieted down considerably since Hanako's been attending school again. Yes! We did it! When she first returned to class, nothing was said nor done that wasn't part of the usual routine. It's been the same way since. Neither of us deserved to bring up her accident, so there simply wasn't any point in pursuing it. Thus, a few days went by. The daily grind continued just as it had before. It's only natural that my mind would wander to other places, and more importantly, other people. The lily-shaped hole in my daily life of Hanako and I has been pretty noticeable for a while now. I have a lily-shaped hole in my heart. I'd, I'd be pleased to say that this has allowed me time to reflect, refine just what my thoughts on her exactly are. But alas, I've had no such luck. It doesn't have, it doesn't help any attempts to do so. I've been led to troublesome topics of, uh, I want to go. I want to go. Who's? Oh, yes, that was the first girl from the prologue. Every time my thoughts drift to that direction, I reflectively try to think about something else. Why did this have to happen to me? Um, hi Yuko, long time no see. I turn and look up to the source of the tentative voice coming from behind me. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to disturb anyone. It, it, that, that's not it. Ah? I glance around the orange-tinted room, quickly realizing how silly my apology must have sounded. In the time I've spent thinking and lazing about in here, everyone's well and truly left. The library's closing. If you don't want to go, I could keep it open a bit longer. It's no trouble at all. Don't worry, I, I should get going anyway. Thanks. As I get up and begin to move off, I feel Yuko's eyes drilling into my back. Is there something wrong? A something on my face? You look depressed. Are you okay? No, not okay. I got a lily-shaped hole in my heart. Yuko's nervous, nervously twists her fingers as she says this, unsure whether she's overstepped her boundaries or not. I really can't tell if she's more worried about my mood or about bothering me. 
normally I just shrug it off and amuse her that I'm fine, but my reflective mood get, gets the better of me. Despite being staff, she really doesn't feel as much like an authority figure as the others. It's just... I got the... I guess the best term of it would be relationship problems? Oh, uh, I'm not too good with that kind of thing. My own relationship ended a bit abruptly. But if you want to talk about it, I mean, I could listen, I think. Well, do your ears work? Because if they do, then I'm pretty sure you can listen. Now, I feel kind of bad for bringing it up. She's not that old, though. So, at least she has a good chance of finding another partner. That it isn't like we're in a bad situation right now. We spent many days together as friends. Something going... Sometimes going out to do stuff, that kind of thing. What friends do? But I'm starting to want to do more for her. Learn more about her. Be with her more, you know. I'm not sure whether it's actually love or not. Though, and a friendship as it stands is enjoyable. You shouldn't let that stop you. I'm sorry. How to say this, um... You just gotta get out there and do it! I think that it's nice to... That you have a good friendship. But school is going to actually eventually end. Do you think you'll be fine with not knowing if it could have gone further than you've grad after you've graduated? I guess that's the uh, crux of my problems. Of my problem, I really have no idea what to answer. <laughs> what the answer to that question is? Well, I couldn't. I can't help you there. What your true feelings are is something you have to decide for yourself. But think. But I think that if you do love her, you should definitely say something. After thinking about it really hard, I decided that even though my relationship didn't work out, it's still better that way than not knowing if it had, it might ever not. I never expected Yuko to sound so wise. It only makes sense that for more life experience than I, she had better a better idea about this. Well, I suppose not Well, I suppose not very much was actually answered. Talking to her has helped get it off my chest, and I have no doubt that I s should confess if I really do like Lily. I'm using my words. I give a slightly frustrated sigh. If only reading was so much actually helped when it came to situations like this. She gives a girlish giggle, which only reinforces my view of her as be being different from the usual staff here. In the end, it all comes down to what will happen after school finishes once again. Considering what happened before I came to Yamako, it feels like being asked to keep up with a field of runners despite having started off from a dozen, a dozen yards behind them. Just, it's just one more motive to move on from the past. The last thing I need right now is to get caught up in that and getting homesick while I'm at it. I can't do that, guys. Alrighty, guys. We're gonna be calling Lily in the next episode. Like and favorite if you've enjoyed. Subscribe, of course. I will see you guys next time I'm out there in YouTube land. Be a nice person. Tip those lovely waitresses of yours. And if you are a waitress, um, you're awesome. <laughs>